Hello there, this is Conquering History Games, and it is time for yet another introductory guide to a nation in the world of Kaiserreich. Today's winner, uh, the next guide I'm doing here as a result of the Patreon poll, is the Kingdom of Poland. The Kingdom of Poland is a very, very extremely interesting uh, nation to research. It took me several hours of research to... Uh, prepare for this guide and it's also going to take me quite a while to record it but don't worry I'm going to cut it up so you guys don't have to see me waiting around on five speed for uh, long periods of time so let's hop in right away so you're probably going to hear some paper <clears throat> cr uh, crinkling and turning throughout the course of this video because I did take rather extensive notes on the Kingdom of Poland here most of this video is going to be dealing with their focus tree and how to navigate it. Uh, so because of that, I want to knock out the rest of the uh, aspects of Poland here at the start. So you're be beginning with 12 soldiers, 12 divisions, pardon me. You have several generals here offering you a wide array of... Uh, effects that they have. You have hill fighters here, for example. I mean, not hill fighters. You've got engineers here. You've got, of course, panzer leaders. You've got recon. You've got commandos. And uh, probably most impressively, you have, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Josef Pilzutski. This guy uh, was effectively, many would say, the father of Poland. And he gets the incredibly rare charismatic uh, trait. However, you should keep in mind that he is going to die at some point. He died. It it doesn't happen in 1936. I've run through games as Poland while testing this over and over again. I've never seen him die before January of 1937. So that's when uh, you want to be keeping an eye out for it. It typically is in 1937. Uh, <clears throat> so while he does have the offensive doctrine and is charismatic, you may not want to get too attached to him. All right. Research slots, you've got three, so that's just kind of standard. Uh, not too many civilian factories, only eight, and consumer goods are eating up five of them. You've got four, only four military factories. Uh, you're on civilian economy, and you're already on limited conscription, but that still only nets you 162,000 soldiers. You also have this national spirit, the Eternal Regency, uh, lowering your national unity by 35%, and effectively doubling your daily political power cost uh, although you do have a uh, stainless buko oh goodness get get ready for this the whole video buko wieki who's get granting you some political power but still uh, once you choose a national focus your political power change day is gonna basically disappear now the reason that you have this regency council is in the world of Kaiserreich. After Germany won the First World War, they created the Kingdom of Poland, which uh, now finds itself wedged between Mitzel Europa to its north, east, and west, and then to its south, you are dealing with uh, the Austrian Empire and all of its puppets. So, you it's going to be a little bit hard to find friends and find your way and expand as the Kingdom of Poland, but we're, we're going to get into that a little bit later. Uh, but one thing that I find so interesting about Poland is it is an incredibly flexible country. You have access to so many party ideologies. You could become a uh, radical socialist. You could become national populist. You can become a. You can be. You start as an authoritarian democratic nation. You could be, be a paternal autocrat, a market liberal, etc., etc., etc. Uh, so very, very interesting um, country to play as. Uh, I don't think there was anything else I wanted to go over because, yeah, we're going to be spending tons of time on the national focus tree, specifically your first national focus. No, I think that's really it for now. So here's your national focus tree here. It's pretty damn big. You could start with the great debate if you try to... Uh, do other national focuses, you will quickly see that they are grayed out and you do not have the option to do that. There also are not really any down here. So you have to take the great debate. This is, think of this as similar to the Union of Britain's Trade Congress that it has to start with. And this great debate is where the Regency Council is going to decide who will be the leader of Poland, who will be the king of this kingdom. 
And as always, thank you very much to the Kaiser Reich team. So I'm going to fast forward to the next event. And um, I'm going to be focusing not necessarily left or right, but one at a time, what each of these possible paths do for you, with two exceptions. I will not be covering the Lithuanian King branch of your focus tree, nor will I be discussing... Well, I mean, I'll, I'll briefly <clears throat> explain how you can become the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, but I will not be covering the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth as a nation in this video. I will link in the description below a separate video where I have already talked about how to create them. Uh, anyway, I'll see you after the cut. All right, about a month has passed and you get your first potential branching in how the Kingdom of Poland will be formed. It's when the economy fails. You've been hit with Black Monday. You lose 50% of your construction speed. Incidentally, let me just explain real quick how you get rid of that. After you've chosen your form of government, you just take new central industrial region, restructure the bank, which cuts the effect in half, and then reintroduce the uh, zdo Zolti, the Polish currency. So it's not that it doesn't take that long to uh, get rid of Black Monday once you're done with the great debate if you just focus hard on it. <coughs> Pardon me. Now, if you choose to send additional police to the countryside, you will lose 50 political power, and this focus will continue. However, you can also choose that the kingdom has failed, and Poland, the kingdom of Poland, becomes the Polish Republic. <coughs> Pardon me. That's some spicy food. Uh, then the great debate will be over. As you see, you have your, your legislative body here that are ruling things, and the social conservatives are now in charge. So, this opens up a new Poland for you. This is the only one of these that you can take. Uh, again, I'm going to go over all of these eventually, the Habsburg, Polish, uh, Saxon King, a new Poland, a firm hand and victory of the people. So, if you take a new Poland, this will get rid of your effect of the eternal regency. Uh, so I'm just going to cut ahead to when that is over. Some time has passed. It's now June of 1936 and I've completed the A New Poll in Focus as well as the holding the free elections and you now get to have your emergency elections. These will happen automatically if you choose not to uh, research this focus. You will have three options. You could be, uh, choose to stick with the patriotic party in which case you will continue to be a social conservative and your popularity will go up you could become the democratic party which uh, would make them the majority or you could form the people's coalition which turns you into a socially liberal uh, society so for example right now we look here the social liberals have a pos uh, oh, pardon me that's the market liberals. the social liberals have a party ideology of 11.5 we select them and you have a brand new leader and these social liberals now have 51.8 percent popularity so you're gonna get 40 percent uh, depending on who you are so you'll be a relatively stable country and that is really the most important uh, decision you're going to make when you come down this focus tree. Of course, you could decide if you're going to uh, have Russia be your faction leader or if you want to join the Entente, if you want to join the international community, which you probably will have to do as a republic in the middle of two Kaisers. Uh, you also get access to the, the beacon of Polish spirit, not yet lost, and Poland forever. These are very defensive-minded focuses. You also can get access to them if you go down the A Firm Hand branch of your folk street and that is basically uh, all you need to know about the Polish Republic to get out of the early game let's go back to the economy failing and explore some of our many other options we have available it's back in February now and this time we're just going to send some additional police to the countryside and uh, continue with researching this great debate national focus and I'll cut back in when there's another decision to be made. You are going to get these occasional pop-ups about the council being distracted where they just debate the silly funny things and they cause you to lose political power. There's also going to be events like bombings in Warsaw that cause you to lose political power. 
There's nothing that you could do about it. It's the world of Kaiserreich. You lose political power a lot in the early game. That's how it always is, pretty much, unless you're the Commune of France. So you're just going to have to deal with it. The decisions you make here do not actually matter. On the 6th of June, 1936, you are going to get the pop-up solutions for our immense problems. This is a very important uh, shatter point in how Poland is going to form its government. You have three options here, which I'm going to go to uh, piece by piece. We're going to start with inviting the military to form a new government. So if you do that, there we go. Once again, and this happens whenever you formally choose your government, uh, the great debate, national focus, will bypass itself, and you are now going to have uh, Walidiak Slaw uh, Sikorski, who will be your paternal autocratic leader. And he's also down here. He's one of your field marshals. You may have noticed that earlier. Where'd he go? Where he's assigned. Right there. And so if you want to go the paternal autocrat route, this is how you do it. This then leads into the a firm hand uh, branch of the focus tree. Also, uh, something else, I don't think I have mentioned this yet, but there is no path that you can go down that lets you have an option to choose more than one of these. For example, you cannot choose the path that gives you a German king and also choose a firm hand. Be sure to highlight the focuses if you need to be if you need help remembering and you're not in a position where you can refer to this video again. If you hover over these national focuses, it'll show you the conditions that are required to complete them. So for example, for a victory of the people, you need a ruling party that is totalist, syndicalist, or radical socialist. Firm hand, you must be uh, the Nationalist Party, or you have, uh, come on now, Sikorsky here. Uh, you have to be the Republic, and so on and so forth. So I'll cut back to when uh, the firm hand focus is complete, and there is a certain event pop up that I want to show you. Sometime after you complete the a firm hand national focus here. Sometimes it happens about 10 days later, sometimes it takes another couple of months. I would just say that you should select another national focus and continue to research, or you could not and hold on to uh, the political power, but I would just say just keep researching national focuses. You are going to get this pop-up called Monarchist Sympathies. It's a national spirit which lowers your national unity and it creates an additional daily political power cost, but it's only 0. 10. Not too bad, right? Well, there are also pop-ups. There are events that fire as a result of these sympathies. They come in the form of bombings, of assassinations, all that flavor text we love, and as a result, you'll lose 20 political power, 40 political power, 80 political power, and it starts to become a serious drain on your political power generation, even more than the daily political power cost that it already costs. So, as soon as possible after it pops up, whether you've done the A Firm Hand or A Victory of the People National Focus, you are going to want to take the Crush the Monarchs Focus, which will uh, stop these monarchist sympathies, as well as drastically reducing the popularity of non-paternal uh, autocrat authoritarian uh, political parties, uh, making yourself even more popular because, you know, it's not a good authoritarian regime if there's any opposition. So that's effectively how you become the paternal autocrats. Uh, so let's go back to the solutions for our massive problems and take a different route. Back here at the solutions for our immense problems event, we're again not going to go for the Regency Council just yet because this has the most amount of options behind it. Instead, the government is going to collapse, which leads to a minus 200, and then you have yet another decision to make. If you want the syndicalists to take over, or if you want the nationalists to take over. I'm going to show the nationalist way, and then for the, th this is going to seem strange, but I'm actually not going to get to the syndicalists until towards the end of the video. That is going to be the last branch of the Polish focus tree that I'm going to talk about. So, for right now, if you, salute, uh, you select the nationalists taking over, you will now have uh, Roman Domowski, who if you've been paying attention and reading to the events that popped up, I didn't show it, but 
he's basically the Polish Hitler. It talks about his uh, men attempting a coup. It's an event that costs you 80 political power. But now he has taken over control of the government and you have a national populist Poland. National populist Poland also only has the option to take the a firm hand. National focus just wants you to let some time go by and uh, the focus is bypassed. There, once again, you have the a firm hand. So it's just sort of up to you if you want to be a paternal autocrat or if you want to be a, a national populist, if you want to go down the a firm hand focus tree, which I'll now go into a little more detail. It's a very militarized focus tree. You get Polish militarism, for example, that gives you an additional recruitable population. The beacon of, Poli of Polish spirit uh, changes your conscription laws for you. Fortress Poland gives you defensive structure uh, in the Lotz and Warsaw regions, not in every single space, but it, it, uh, it does set you up for defense later on. And then down here, uh, you can get claims on various uh, territories, for example. But these are a little bit randomly generated. For example, uh, the Reds in the Ukraine, you need the Kingdom of Ukraine to invite Khrushchev into the government. And if that's the case, you will be able to ally with the Don Kuban Union and split the Kingdom of Ukraine between the two of you. This also, this tree also gives you claims uh, or at least the ability to attack Germany uh, and partition it as well. This is this uh, the Prussian partition is effectively Danziger War by a different name. So that is the a firm hand branch of the focus tree. Let's look at actually electing a king next. This time we are going to select the Regency Council must elect a king now. And you just now need to wait for the rest of the great debate to finish up. And I'm just going to cut ahead to when the event pop-ups happen. See you there. On the last day of the great debate, give or take a day or two, you will get this event pop up, the Lithuanians and the Commonwealth. And I already said I'm not going to go into detail as to how to form the Commonwealth. I already have a video about that in the description below. Uh, but you're just going to want to agree to the proposal here if you want to fuse the Lithuanians and the Polish together. Keep in mind, this will automatically make you a member of Middle East Europa, although that can be changed later. But for right now, we are just going to proceed with the election. And here it finally is in the early days of August choosing your king. So you have four options here, but as I said before, I am not going to be explaining the Lithuanian king branch. There is very little good reason to ever take this branch if you want to do stuff with Lithuania, just form the Commonwealth. It's a better path. Now, if you you can choose to form the Commonwealth now if you uh, select Meng Dong the 3rd here, and then you're going to get the uh, decision once more. But first, let's take a look at the a Saxon king branch. Now, once you do this, well, you're going to get you're going to get these pop-ups, of course, electing your new king, and you can select his national fo focus. You have Frederick Christian Saski as your king now, and he is a paternal autocrat. You will now have a better opinion of Germany because you've elected their king, although this does not affect their opinion of you. In that same manner, you now like Austria less, and Austria still doesn't really care about you, as far as who your king is. It doesn't affect who, how, they, how they particularly feel about you. So the Saxon king route is the route that you want to take if you plan on joining Middle Europa. Uh, just like there is very little reason to take the a Lithuanian king focus because you could just form the Commonwealth anyway. If you become a Saxon king, there is very little good reason to do so unless you plan on joining Middle Europa. So the, these are kind of goal-oriented, these different branches of uh, how you form your nation. Of course, you could choose to get a Saxon king and then go to war with them later and say, look at me, look at me, I'm Middle Europa now, <laughs> or something like that. But I'm just going to fast forward to yet another event in this focus tree, and I'll talk about it when we get there. See ya. Uh, oh, one more thing. Uh, keep in mind, 
all of your ministers are authoritarian Democrats, even though you are a paternal autocrat right now. So again, just keep that in mind. See you later. In early 1937, you are going to have elections for your legislative body, in which you're going to have four different options to choose from. These all take you in radically different directions, and in the case of uh, Friedrich here, you will stop being a political autocrat no matter what. Now, your options are you could become the Patriotic Party, which allows you to become social conservative. You could become social liberal. Uh, the Nationalists can seize control, although by this point it's already January of 1937, so if you wanted the Nationalists to seize control, you probably should have done it earlier as I showed you. But it is possible to change to them right here. Uh, you also can have the syndicalist seize control. Again, you, you had an opportunity to do it earlier. Not a really good reason to do it uh, now rather than... Um, I mean, there's no good reason to not have done it earlier. And this will be uh, the first election you will get. And then you will not have another for four years unless you take a certain branch of the folk tree. But let's just for demonstrative purposes say that you had the People's Coalition win the election, uh, even though they are very very uh, unpopular right now they then will become the majority party and you and your king will be considered social liberal so let's now talk about how you could turn elections off if you take any of these four king branches you can then make a second decision whether you want to be an absolute monarch or if you want to reform the monarchy at the end of the absolute monarch focus branch you can abolish the sejim the basically the Polish legislative branch, and you will not have any more elections. Your next election would be in 1941. Alternatively, you can reform the monarch, and then you get a couple of nice national spirits, giving you more of a recruitable population and uh, less of a daily political power cost. There, uh, there really is not any downside to taking the reform of the monarchy. You, of course, can take the absolute monarch if you want, but the reform monarch effects just seem to be so much better. But hey, it's up to you. I don't know if you want to role play or something like that. So that's about all you got to know about the, uh, yeah, about how to be the Saxon king. Also, your ministers are going to change. So as you can see, you have some social liberals here now. You also can pick a new head of government, uh, of which there are many to choose from. So let's go back and uh, try a different king. Let's see what happens when you choose an Hap a Habsburg. You, uh, of course, are going to get the opposite effect of when you chose a German king. Now you have this Habsburg in control, and you like the Austrians more, and you like the Germans less. So it's the opposite this time. You are social conservative this time, though, not paternal autocrat. And this is going to happen even if... Uh, you see right now, you see Austria is social conservative. However, trust me, I've been running this over and over. Even if Austria is social democratic when the election happens, you will still be social conservative. Uh, after that, you will again in January of 1937 get the elections uh, for the CIGEM, and you're going to have the same options. You can continue to be social conservative or you can become social liberal. However, I want to uh, point out to you that in case you were thinking about abolishing them, you cannot complete these three focuses before the 1937 elections happen. So that is something that you are going to have to do. Besides that, um, of course, if you have an Austrian king, you are going to want to start heading towards joining the Austrian Federation, and this is just dependent on... It'll have a different name. It, it says here the Austrian Empire just has to be a faction leader and as you may know if you have already been playing a little bit of Kaiserreich but you just haven't really played that much Poland Austria does have several options as far as names as faction can go and uh, and of course you can join their uh, their 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 science circle you can get more population you can ask for Galatia back which was uh, would be this area here get Krakow and, and low uh, Good luck with that, but uh, no, I mean, it depends. It depends. Uh, so that is how it is when you go for the um, Austrian king. And just a note on the Lithuanian king, in case you were wondering, you do become a uh, paternal autocrat. However, uh, 
I, I forgot to mention this earlier, you cannot reform the monarch or become an absolute monarch, so you can only go straight down if you are the Lithuanian king. But, as I said before, if you're going to do the Lithuanian thing, just form the Commonwealth. Let's go back to the king election now. Finally, perhaps you've decided that you do not want to be beholden to the whims of Germany and Austria. Poland is for the Polish and you choose to have a Polish king. This keeps you as an authoritarian Democrat. And uh, let's, let's just start fast forwarding here. Uh, and you, do, you are going to have very high popularity. And you choose to yeah, go with the a Polish king route. Now, the, you're already going to be at 61% popularity here. And then by completing the a true Polish king of uh, focus you'll get an additional 20 percent of popularity so that is going to put you into the highest echelon of uh, party popularity so you're going to be getting a whole political power point a day which is nice so heading down this branch is going to do things like net you um Wait a minute. Let's let's fast forward. You're just going to be writing a new uh, constitution, clearing the line of succession. Uh, it's going to get you a lot of political power, and uh, most importantly, down here on the People's King, you get additional division, attack, and defense on your core territory. So it's good for if you're playing a defensive kind of game. Also, the increased uh, national unity doesn't hurt either. Uh, let's fast forward then to what's going to happen when you write the new constitution. And I'll see you there. After you complete the write a new constitution focuses, you're going to have four options here. And this is just up to personal player preference. You can work on your economy by getting more construction. You can get a research bonus for land doctrine. You get more political power or you can get national unity. Uh, so just pick whatever your poison is. So that is about all there is to it as far as um, the Polish king is concerned. Now, all you left-wingers out there, all you Cindy scum or saints, depending on who you, uh, who you ask, are probably wondering, well, what about the victory of the people? Well, we're going to go way back in time now and we'll take a look at that. We have to go back to June of 1936 and the solutions for our immense problems. You want the government to collapse and then you want the syndicalists to take over. Now, you could have them take over in the elections later if you go down another branch but there's no real good reason to do that so now you've got uh oops, oopsie let's fix that now you've got felix here as the leader of the polish socialist republic so you begin as a totalist uh syndicalist country uh, so a little bit against the grain there you give it a day the great debate will end. Yes, you've fallen into syndicalism. And now you have available to you the victory of the people, national focus. So there is there is some interesting things down this branch. And uh, I'll now cut ahead to when those take place. Also, keeping in, keep this in mind. I'm not sure if I've uh, said this before or not. It's a long video. But... All of these focuses, all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them, when you take that second focus after the great debate, it will always get rid of the um, eternal regency effect. You also are, again, going to get the crush the monarchs. Uh, you're going to have to take the crush the monarchs focus at some point if you go down this branch because the monarchist sympathies are still going to be there. Uh, I believe that the intentions of the developers was because it is reflecting how you have this Regency Council which has for 20 years been trying to elect a king and then they never ended up getting that king at all but you are gonna have that segment of the populace that uh, still wants a king and they don't know that every man is gonna be a king under you I think that was a Polish saying <laughs> every man a king All right. anyway let's cut ahead to another event in late 1937, you are going to get this event that Comrade uh, Dzerzhinsky has passed away. Rest in peace, Iron Felix. Uh, now, in our own timeline, that makes sense because he had actually died in 1926 of a heart attack. So he held on for a good another 11 years or so. He was uh, somebody who Stalin admired, which explains why he was a totalist. But now, 
now you have to make the decision as to which way your um, your syndicalist Poland is going to go and that depends on which of your leaders are going to take over now you can choose between totalist syndicalists or a different totalist over here I'll go through each of them in turn you have Carol Radak who uh, you could have be in control uh, and I really think they surely could have found a better picture of him than this I mean this look, makes him look pretty crazed you, you don't even see any where he has some pretty awesome sideburns but uh, by doing that you can go down the Radic in control branch uh, which is I guess you could say more a traditionally totalist uh, way to go but you could also eventually join the fourth international if uh, Soviet Russia was created uh, so this is something good to know in uh, in multiplayer games for example or if uh, you have that rare occurrence where the Soviet Union is formed in the e in the east although it is uh, it is seemingly becoming rarer and rarer as time goes on uh it's like uh, there was something i wanted to talk about Roddick. yeah so Roddick, he was somebody who was involved in the russian revolution here let's get his picture up i mean i don't want to go into the whole history of the dude but uh you know he was a he was a member of the common turn he took uh, part in the german revolution uh and he eventually died in 1939 uh, while he was a member of the Communist Party of the uh, Soviet Union, he died in a labor camp after he was um, sentenced to 10 years of hard labor in uh, 1936. He had been interrogated for almost three months. Anyway, let's go back and check at our look at uh, look at our other options that we could take here. All right, your second possible choice is Jacob Han. Sexki, uh, which I've actually seen spelled differently sometimes. I usually see it spelled G A N E T S K Y, but I'm sure whoever uh, did the Poland thing knows Polish better than I do. Uh, but he, uh, anyway, he was an old associate of Lenin's, as it says right there. So there he is. And this opens up the middle route, a revival of Leninist ideals, which is kind of interesting in the Kaiserreich world because the left leftwards, very communistic elements politically of the Kaiserreich world have abandoned the Leninist school of thought because they failed so miserably during the Russian Civil War uh, in the Kaiserreich timeline. And in our own timeline, Hensky here was uh, executed also during the Great Purge. He was yet another victim of him. But this also opens up again. You can establish new communes, or you can attend the International, which can lead to a pact with France. Also, uh, something I want to point out, these are not mutually exclusive until you get down here. So you can, and I have in the past, establish new communes, research cities, and attend the International before you cho choose uh, which, which of these groups that you want to ally yourself with. And finally, let's take a look at Rosa Luxemburg. Here we have Rosa Luxemburg, another totalist who can become the leader of the Poland, the Polish so Socialist Republic. Um, I think that the Polish focus tree is all done as far as being in development, but I think I did see a recent post by the developers that they are going to change her portrait to uh, something better. I'm not a huge fan of this one myself. Uh, <clears throat> so she's actually German, and uh, yet here she is as the, I don't want to say the queen of Poland, but as the first amongst equals of Poland, although I got to say I'm not a fan of her being considered a uh, totalist. But anyway, this, I mean, if you guys want me to do a whole video talking about who all these people are, I, I certainly can, like talking about who they were in real life. Uh, just say the word. This also um, lets you go down the attending the international. However, you cannot establish new communes. So if you're going to go with Rosa, you cannot join the fourth international. That path is shut off to you. But you can create the Ministry of Public Security, which lessens the effect of partisans on you, as well as getting international Polish agents and uh, spreading the revolution. Spreading the revolution in particular might be something that you guys want to do. Uh, it also lets you send more volunteers. So that is it. I mean, obviously that's not all there is to, 
to uh, Poland and how to play it. I didn't even go over the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, which has its own very extensive focus tree, but I hope that was enough that you have a general understanding as to how to play Poland. Uh, and you now know the wealth of political ideologies that could potentially lead it, ranging from totalists to national pol populists to social liberals, social conservatives, authoritarian democrats, and much, much more. So, if you liked this video and it was helpful for you, please hit that like button and let me know in the comments. I want to uh, give a special thanks to my Patreons, who are the ones who choose these videos. So, thank you very much to Gur. Uh, in, in particular, I mean, in particular to Gurr, Swoobmeister, Tums Jor, John Linderman, and Black Zero. And remember, if you want to vote on what the next introductory guide to a nation in the world of Kaiserreich is going to be, click the link to my Patreon below. Uh, uh, join the join my Patreon community, and you get to vote on the polls that I very regularly put up, deciding on what kind of content that I put out. And. Be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell so you're always notified whenever there is new content up. And thank you for your time, and have a wonderful day.